second here. Today we are starting a new series called Hyperloop Visions. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at a Hyperloop that will connect Australia and New Zealand. Uh, with the cities with, uh, being connected are Auckland, Sydney and Adelaide. Uh, with Sydney and Auckland being the largest cities of each of the two nations currently, right now. However, the population of, of Australia is still too small to cater for this project and we still have limited knowledge of this technology and also that tunnelling under the Tasman Sea is still very difficult in today's technology. So this is only going to be in the long term. But you, you may be asking what's a vacuum tube or a hyperloop? Now this vacuum tube will be is a mode of transportation which will be run by 16 car maglev trains in this in this line and they are capable uh, they will be powered by magnets and so you get rid of the friction of gravity and there's no friction of gravity and then if you have if you have vacuum tubes where these tubes are airless you can even reduce you can even take it away the air friction so you have no friction whatsoever for these mag for these super fast trains and you can allow these trains to run in excess of 6000 miles an hour which can allow you to travel from Adelaide to Auckland in even like maybe half an hour but we have speed restrictions so it would be it would take you probably an hour to go from Adelaide to Auckland in the fastest service. But without further ado, let's begin this showcase. The, the Hyperloop will begin at the Adelaide Railway Terminus, which is north of the Adelaide of downtown Adelaide or the Adelaide CBD. This line, w the Hyperloop will run parallel to the existing railway line and will accelerate to around 240 miles an hour until it reaches this intermodal terminal and then once it reaches the curve then trains will accelerate quickly to 2000 kilometers an hour um, it will run underground prior to the curve and then it will get back onto ground level once it reaches the Waterloo corner and then it will just run uh, very fast speed of 2000 kilometers an hour through the farms north of Adelaide and then we'll ha and then we will have a regional stop at Peterborough I've also forgot to mention that um, orange is for express and regional and green is for regional stops only so green will mean that trains will be passing through those stops the the super express trains will be passing through those stops and once it reaches Peterborough it's gonna be running across the outback and then it will enter the state of New South Wales before we have before it reaches Broken Hill Station and if vertical farming can, is possible, then we can actually allow s these inland cities, even if they're in the middle of the driest desert, we can allow these cities to support populations of at least 500,000. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, you can have about two and a half million. You th these regional stops will will be suitable for two and a half million residents in inland Australia and I also forgot to mention that from Peterborough trains will accelerate to 5,000 kilometers an hour or 3,000 miles an hour and then it will, it will just continue along the desert at 3,000 miles an hour especially for the super fast trains the express trains and then we'll have a stop at Condobolin for another it's another regional stop and then there's also another regional stop at Parks which is also 
ideal for tourism. There's actually like a radio telescope somewhere along, somewhere near parks, and um, and so this hyperloop will also boost tourism in inland Australia as well. The hyperloop will then continue to the relatively large city of Orange. With this city is currently hosts around maybe 30,000 to 50,000 residents but this city will even get even larger if we have the Hyperloop in there. Uh, now from Orange eastward the the engineering challenges start from Orange. The Hyperloop will be running just through the central west in New South Wales and then once it reaches this area, this is where a lot of the tunneling and the bridges are going to be constructed. There's going to be a tunnel underneath Narrow Neck, and then a bridge across the Cedar Valley, and then underneath Mount Solitary, there's a tunnel underneath, and then also along un over Jamison Valley, and then it will have tunnels and short bridges. Um, underneath the Blue Labyrinth and also the rest of the Blue Mountains. And so this is going to be a real engineering challenge. But this is not the hardest engineering challenge. You will know the hardest engineering challenge once I get past Sydney. So the Hyperloop will then merge back onto the M4 and the engineering challenges stop here for now. We'll have will have a major stop at Penrith. This is col color-coded orange, so this means it will be both regional and express. We'll have a stop at Penrith here, which will serve um, the, ma the major area of Penrith. It's a regional city in the city of Sydney. It's Sydney is a city of Sydney. I mean, a city of cities. Sorry. And Pe Penrith is one of these cities. And the hi and also the hyperloop trains will be reduced to 225 miles an hour or 360 kilometers an hour between Penrith and Five Dock. It will just continue along the M4, and then we've also decided that we've had we have a stop at Wet and Wild so that we can allow tourists to visit. We can allow tourists to get off the Hyperloop and go to the theme park of Wet n Wild. There would also be hotels around the area, but this is only un this is only but this is color coded in a different color because it is going to be. I want you to vote if you want this station to exist or not. If you want to, if you want to stop at Wet and Wild, please comment on, please comment on the video. But anyhow, the Hyperloop will continue along the M4 until it reaches Church Street, which is south of the Parramatta CBD, and at the intersection of Church Street, Parramatta Road, and Woodville Road, we will have a stop at Parramatta. And Parramatta is Sydney second CBD. And so that's why having a stop there would be vital for the growth of Western Sydney. Trains will still continue along this line at 360 kilometers an hour until we reach this intersection right here, Harris Road and Parramatta Road. And from there, trains will decelerate, uh, the Hyperloop will branch off from Parramatta Road, run underground and trains will decelerate to 150 miles an hour and the Hyperloop will then merge into De Broyd Parade even as De Broyd Parade re becomes renamed to the City West Link the Hyperloop will be running along the City West Link and even run th uh, and travel through the An along the Anzac Bridge, parallel to the Anzac Bridge, and then the Hyperloop or the vacuum tube will then run, will then go underneath, 
Tumbalong Park, which is right here, near Darling Harbour. And the Hyperloop trains will then start to sl slow down before they all make their way to get their stop at Sydney, um, which is called Sydney Museum because Museum is the closest train station to... Um, so yeah, you got Museum Station there. You, it's the closest station to... Um, so I'll just move it there. Museum is the closest station, train station, existing train station to this new major Hyperloop station where a lot of trains will terminate at Sydney. Um, it's it's the, the domestic, domestic Hyperloop trains or regional Hyperloop trains will terminate at Sydney. But there will be Hyperloop trains which will continue all the way to Auckland. So it will run along Oxford Street as a viaduct through Oxford Street. And then once it reaches Bondi Junction, th the Hyperloop will start running underneath a very, very long tunnel. Yes, very long. And this is going to be the hardest the most expensive part of the project, the Tasman Sea Tunnel. The Tasman Tunnel, which will be, which will have Hyperloop trains running underneath the Tasman Sea. And, and underneath the Tasman Sea, Hyperloop trains will accelerate to a whopping 6,000 miles an hour, or 10,000 kilometers an hour in metric terms. But then the Hyperloop trains will then decelerate as it approaches the coast of New Zealand and then it will reduce its speed to 150 miles an hour once it re-emerges on the northwestern motorway around this new intersection right here just north of Waterview uh, or in a and it will it will run parallel to Interstate 16 and this will be the last leg of the journey just running as a viaduct along Interstate 16 or the Northwestern Motorway and then it will go underneath the Adela the Auckland CBD sorry I was I th if I said Adelaide um, instead of Auckland please forgive me I think it was just a slight mistake um, but we go underneath the CBD of Auckland and then from and then once we reach Auckland Britomart, that is where these Hyperloop trains will terminate. And so this is your project, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hyperloop. Um, it will be at around 3,700 kilometers long. Or we'll check the properties here. 3,700 kilometers long, around that length, or you can say 2,300 miles. So this is a very, this is a really good project for Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand, by the way, are fast-growing countries. You'll have a lot of immigrants from all over the world coming to Australia and New Zealand. And the, and there will be, and there will be a point where there's going to be so little room in Adelaide, in Sydney and Auckland that we really need to put in. Um, we need to put growth in inland Australia as well. And so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this was Voyager the Second speaking in this episode. I hope you enjoyed this nice video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll, there's, also be, um, there's also going to be more Hyperloop projects across inland Australia. There will be one from Adelaide to Perth in the near future. And then we would also consider extending the Hyperloop from Adelaide to Melbourne. And also having a Hyperloop from Sejuna to Darwin via Alice Springs, the Red Centre, maybe a stop at Uluru. But yeah, that'll be for a later episode. That will be in a future episode. But anyway, guys, this was Voyager the Second speaking to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and favorite the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, this has been Voyager the Second talking to you. Goodbye for now. See you next time.